Hi, uh, I'm State Representative Roger Bruce. I represent District 61, which encompasses Fulton County, Douglas County, uh, Cobb County, parts of the city of Atlanta, and parts of the newly incorporated city of South Fulton. And uh, each week we're going to be doing uh, these videos to give people an opportunity to talk about issues of concern to them uh, in our new city or in the, the district a, a, as a whole and uh, give people a chance to, to really voice how they feel about different things, uh, to share thoughts, share ideas, uh, and everything does not have to be where we're, you know, angry about it. You know, we just want to come together and, and talk about things that are of interest to all of us. Uh, today I have Daphne Jordan, uh, who has been very, very uh, active in our community. Uh, her subject matter uh, primarily has been around uh, public safety, but the reality is that she is a citizen uh, of our community and uh, there are lots of things that we want to talk about. So, welcome. Thank you. And uh, I'm glad that you are able to come. Uh, we did have another individual that was going to join us today, but she woke up today and she wasn't feeling well. Right. So we wish her well and we hope that, that she has a, a speedy recovery. Absolutely. And, um, but one of the things that I wanted to talk about, as you know, you and I have had many, many conversations uh, around our new city mm -hmm. and around uh, basically three topics, public safety, education, and economic development. And I'm trying to uh, make sure that, uh, that our citizen, citizens know how those three things blend together. And I know you know. So why don't we start with that topic and, and get your thoughts and ideas. How do we merge those three topics together and balance the need for the public to know about the issues related to crime, but also to not paint a picture where people don't want to live or bring their businesses uh, to our community because if that happens then we don't have the economic development Absolutely. and if we don't have the economic development then we can't pay for the public safety so Correct. it's all intertwined so it why, is why don't you it's talk all about intertwined that? Uh, from my perspective economic development gives us the revenue stream that we need um, to sustain the existing community and to carry us forward into the future to be even more of a thriving uh, city mm -hmm. as we move forward. So we know that we need the economic development. Um, however, we also know that it's more helpful to have a city that has less crime right. in the process. And while you have less crime, then you'll have more kids that are, because most of the crimes that we've uh, been challenged with have been committed in most cases by juveniles. So how do you, how do you balance that? How how do we? Because I, I know you and I have had you know some pretty heavy duty conversations <laughs> around have. around the balance. We have. And and so how do we how do we do that? How do we balance the need for the public to know? And I agree, the public needs to know so that they can prepare and be safe and you know not be caught off guard. Correct. But at the same time. How do we balance that? Well, the way I think we balance it is is something that we do need to talk about. We can't shy away from the conversation, mm -hmm. but it isn't something that we have to talk about every day in a negative light. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, sharing information uh, with the community, we use a lot of social media, let's say, for communities. Right. And what we have found is by helping people to be aware uh, helps them to manage their own personal safety strategy because mm -hmm. we're in the day and age right now that we know we do not have enough police regardless of where you are right. it can be the city of Atlanta it can be city of South Fulton there's never going to be enough police on the street right. to police us so we do have to take individual responsibility by so making sure that, that our homes okay. uh, let's just take a I was riding around in the community in one community in particular, and half of the people in that community did not have storm protective doors. Mm -hmm. And that's important because as a criminal, that's what they're doing. They're riding around trying to find an easy target. Okay. So as a citizen nowadays, we can't just, you know, we're not living in Mayberry. Right. We are living in a time when criminals are actually trying to find their next victim, and we need to at least do absolutely all we can 
uh, in our home setting to make sure we have cameras. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're in a, a new uh, digital divide now where literally you can watch your home 24-7 by installing a ring device right. um, on your doorbell and ADT has cameras. And that's where you can see whoever's ringing the doorbell. And you can see who's ever ringing the doorbell. Okay. They don't know that you're home, but you can tell them, hey, this is not a good time, come back. Okay. Or you can tell them, hey, the police are here. Mm -hmm. uh, you may want to leave. And so it's a very good tool. It's actually something that I reached out to that company, uh, mm -hmm. Roger, and they have afforded us an, a discount code indefinitely okay. for the city of South Fulton. Uh, I kept asking them for the discount code. We had so many people buying them. Okay. And so now in the city of South Fulton, we have our own code. Um, and it gives you $25 off the device. Okay. Because it's, even the police. You want to tell everybody what that code is? I, I want to say it's 7 SWAT ATL. 25. So if you are in the 30349, the 30331, and there's a few other zip codes that may be outside of the city of South Fulton okay. that may be exempt from it. But and, and, um, and that code, what's the company name of the company? It's called ring.com. So you can go to ring.com, put in 7 S W A T L 25, and you'll get $25 off the device. Okay. It is a, it's been a help to a lot of people where they weren't able to see who was coming to knock on those doors. Right. But that's the first thing we need to do is we need to take a reality check among ourselves and realize that unless we're paying for personal security, mm -hmm. then we've got to put some things in place to make sure we have secured our homes. Okay. And then as we're leaving throughout the day, we need to be aware of our surroundings. Um, some of the crimes that have occurred have happened because we as individuals have been so consumed on our cell phones, uh, we're not paying attention to our surroundings, but mm -hmm. the criminals are paying attention right. to us. And so uh, we don't lock our doors, and by the time we get back in our car, the purses are gone, or maybe your car is gone. Okay. So that's another thing. Is we, so, have to, we have to be in a plan mode at all times, plan so, and so preparation personal mode. Protection. Personal protection. So how do we, uh, again, and that's good information, but the question becomes, you know, if, because you mentioned social media and, and communicating, mm -hmm. the social media gets picked up by anybody anywhere in the world. It does. And, uh, and I know you kind of got upset me one day when I mentioned to you that, <laughs> that we were working on some, some mm -hmm. uh, bringing some companies in. Mm -hmm. And uh, those companies were upset because they had gone on the internet mm -hmm. and we were asking them to come here and invest in our city, mm -hmm. uh, bring, they, those, those companies were from uh, Japan. Okay. And, uh, and we were asking them to come and invest a really significant amount of money. Mm -hmm. And they were like, well, you know, we saw this on the internet, we saw that on the internet. Mm -hmm. And uh, and again, you know, we got to have a balance. We do. You know, because if people won't come mm -hmm. and invest. Now, one of the things that I've been pushing, as, as I hope you know, is that even though we wanted that company to come here, they could not come here and invest in our city without having a partner from somebody who lived in the city. Okay. And, uh, and that's the, the thing that I've been pushing uh, very hard for is to make sure that as we try to grow mm -hmm. this city, mm -hmm. that the people who live in the city have an opportunity to grow and prosper and, 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 and move forward too. Okay. Uh, as you know, and you probably know somebody in this situation, uh, a lot of our families, if somebody died, we had to take up a collection to bury. Absolutely. We, we are not yet in the mind frame of, of, of basically passing wealth on from generation to generation. Right. Um, and we have to get there. But the only way we're going to get there is if we start owning our own businesses, owning the property in the, in the community where we live, and that's what I advocate for. Right. And, uh, and so, like I said, even though we were pushing to get this company to come here, it was not to come here, put their money here, and and then take money from the citizens and then go back over there. It was to leave it here oh, good. and to, to to allow people who live here to invest and grow and prosper. Um, so again, that's why I'm trying to get the understanding of the balance. Mm -hmm. You know, if if you know, we tried to start as you know, I invited you to come. Uh, we want to try to start this investment club. Right where people who live in the community would pool their money together and buy land uh, in the city and then have their say on how they want to develop it, what they want there. Right. Um, I'm sure that in your day-to-day, -day, people are asking you 
what I'm saying to you all the time. Here's what I like to have in our city. Right, they are. What are some of the things that they say? Whole Foods has been on the top, one of the top uh, vendors, and um, there's a, a few more coffee shops and breakfast spots that mm -hmm. people have mentioned that we need more restaurants mm -hmm. um, that we can go to so that we're not having to travel to um, Atlanta. We can get some of those nice. Mm -hmm. But has that dialogue been primarily that we have to go somewhere else mm -hmm. and ask somebody who's somewhere else to come into our community and set up shop? Is that pretty much what it prim was? primarily has been? Okay. What about changing lines. that dialogue? To, and I know your husband is, is involved in setting up restaurants. Yes. So what if we change that dialogue? Instead of a, a Whole Foods, we have Daphne Foods. Sounds good to me. You know, or, or, or you understand what I'm saying? I do. You know, the, the same place that Whole Foods buys their inventory from, mm -hmm. why could you not buy that inventory and set up a similar type place in your community I mean, I guess I'm just trying to understand why we can't get the dialogue to change. Well, because I, I think that right now we are still circumventing through the new city and the challenges that have occurred mm -hmm. uh, between establishing the new city and just not even realizing that that's a potential opportunity. I think um, we can start having more of these type of dialogues to get people to think um, outside of the box right. because that definitely is an outside of the box type of thinking. We've been looking for Kroger to come, we've been looking at right. all these other different companies, but if we were able to have an opportunity to invest in those ourselves right. and create generational wealth, because um, I have children, right. so it would be great to be able to let turn something over to our kids and this whole continuation of gen 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 generational wealth can continue mm -hmm. um, in the new city. I just think we don't have probably enough information um, it, to is, carry it, forth the dialogue or even know what the options may be. Okay, and we're working on that. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I find too is that there's an inherent distrust oh of each goodness. other. Yes. And, and I'm not sure, I, I understand from whence that comes, but mm -hmm. how do we, again, because that's part of the balance. It is. You know, how do we get people to start to interact with each other, trust each other? Uh, and one of the things that we talked about, if you think about our community, especially over in, in, in the city, we got a whole bunch of subdivisions. We do. And I don't think we need any more, quite frankly, but we have a bunch of <laughs> I would agree. But they're not connected. <laughs> they're not. And, and, um, and someone, I can't remember who I was talking to, but somebody had mentioned to me, and I thought it was a great idea, mm -hmm. to, if you, if you get a map, was that you that was telling me about this? You get a map, and, um, and you look down at, at the city, mm -hmm. and you will find you got a subdivision here, a subdivision here, yes. but you have some space in between some of these. Mm -hmm. And if we were to come up with a concept to create connectivity, between these subdivisions, either through bike trails or walking trails or something that allowed these communities to connect. Right. What impact would that have? I think it would have a great lasting impact. Right now, we are segregated mm -hmm. um, within this integration of a new city, and we literally are operating, in some cases, in silos. Right. So even today, as we look at our subdivisions, there are people inside of our subdivisions that don't even know the neighbors within three doors down. So there's a huge gap. But why do you think that is? I think we, it, it has a lot to do with uh, technology and, and where we are today with helping with families. When I grew up, Everyone would pass along a, a, a licking to you if you messed up in school. I lived with my big mama, and you just did not misbehave. It was um, a village. Right. Well, the village somewhere, um, I would say, separated. And it's almost like it's every man for himself and God for us all, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And we, we're, we can actually change that and become a, a village. That's why I think when we do talk about education, one of the things that um, is unique about some of the northern schools and those communities is they do a lot of things together. Right. Uh, they commune together right. and they make decisions together. They're on one accord. And we can start now doing a much better job of doing that within our own communities. That's, that's a, the first step towards um, desegregating the segregation right. that we see in the, in the communities now. We've got to figure that one out because... We do. 
you know, you, your children, the success of your children is directly linked to the success of mine and vice versa. Absolutely. And because uh, at some point, you know, there's going to be another generation that takes over all the stuff that we're doing. Mm -hmm. And if we don't properly prepare them, it's kind of crazy. Yes. But, you know, to your point, even in families, people don't know their own relatives anymore. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I'm... You know, everybody gets split up, they're all over the place, and I, I have a fear that one day my my son or my daughter is going to come home with a cousin that they didn't know <laughs> oh, and no. say, I'm getting ready to marry him. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but, you, oh, but, no. But, but that could happen. It could. In, in it this could. day and time, you know. And um, so we have to figure out how do we get back to this village and how do we get people, you know, people get on this Internet and they use the Internet <laughs> as a way to, 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 to take stabs at people. They do. And, and and sometimes you have to point out, you know, certain things, but but is that the best use of a medium that connects to so many? Or would it be a better use of that if we can come up with ways to encourage people to inspire through the internet, uh, to engage in intelligent conversation about how to solve the problems as opposed to continually pointing out what the problem is? Absolutely. <laughs> oh. I just sort of did that recently with the, one of the meetings that we just had. Um, what we have, Roger, is we have people now, they don't even have cable anymore. They're using internet I'm TV. trying to figure out how to do that so I can get rid <laughs> of my cable. They're there. using internet <laughs> television. Um, they may watch the news or they may get their news on Facebook um, through the news channels. Things have really changed and so a lot of people are relying on what's on social media to um, receive information and so it is important to get factual information and that's what I... How do you validate it? Well, how do you validate the factual information? Well, how do you validate that the information is factual? Um, it's supported by documents that can be linked to, let's just say, the charter. <laughs> okay, but, but, but you and I both know that somebody will make up something. Yes. They'll come up with some theory or some They can. Something. And it's up to yeah. us to fact check them, prove it. Exactly. We can ask for the proof, and if they can't provide it, then we know it's just a rule. But do people do that? Not all the time. I mean, that's something that I think within our group, uh, I get a lot of information from a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people before I share this information, it has to come from a credible source. It has to be. If I can't find it, then I'm not posting it. But you're the exception. You're not the rule. <laughs> well, yeah. and then so maybe this because is because I see some crazy stuff out there. <laughs> I have too. And, and uh, you know, and there's no filter. There yeah. is no filter, and we have to begin to be that filter um, and choose the information that we're sharing and make sure that what is the outcome? What is, what are we expecting to deliver? Mm -hmm. uh, what would we, what would we like to see? happen after we deliver this message. Okay, well, to, to that point, you know, we, we have our new city now. We do. What's your thoughts? Deep breath. <laughs> so I have a lot of thoughts. I attended my first meeting a few weeks ago. Okay. Uh, it was the second uh, Tuesday in September, and I felt like it was time for me to get involved um, because I had sort of sat back and just kept watching things from a watchful eye. And I was like, oh, they'll get it together. Oh, there won't be another veto. And there was another veto, and then there's another veto. And then the issue with the age just would not go away. Right. A lot of us were wondering, well, what will they do with these city council aides? It just didn't I'm make sense. I'm still wondering what they're going to do. Well, right? we don't know either, neither do they. Okay. There is no job description for them. Um, and what really concerned me, and the reason why I said, well, let me make my way to city council so they can hear from me is that we were hearing that at the 10 o'clock session they had voted to take funds from parks and recs. Right. Well my son has been playing at Welcome All Park since he was three years old and that just completely that did something to me on the mm -hmm. inside. Um, with the issue with crime that we have right now if you take away funding from parks and recs that could be funding that could be used to provide programs for some of the juveniles. Yeah, you know that that bothered me a lot too. Mm -hmm. um, not only the, the what you just said, but the fact that they were going to pay these people on par to do part-time work to on par with a full-time police officer. I was like, something's wrong with this picture. And um, I'm not sure exactly what the balance is there, but what it appears is that there's this this rift, if you want to call it that, between the mayor and the council. Mm -hmm and that the citizens are caught in the crossfire. We are. And uh, so how do we 
Well, let me, you, you probably have already heard that I'm going to uh, come up with some legislation that I'm going to put it out Good. there for discussion, mm -hmm. okay? And as you know, you know, I created the, I, I was the one that wrote the charter uh, to allow us to have this opportunity to take care of ourselves, which I really mm -hmm. think was the right thing to do. I absolutely believe that. Uh, I'm not sure that everyone is on the same page as to how to get there. Correct. And, and we how, would agree and with you. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so the charter is to serve as a guideline. It is. To say, here's, if we do these things, it is likely that our city will be a success. Right. If we don't do these things, then we're going to have some chaos, and mm -hmm. when you have chaos, it's less likely it is. that you're going to have success. And we lose confidence in leadership. You lose, you lose the confidence. Yes. Uh, but charters change. Mm -hmm. And uh, they change all the time. You know, when we're in session in January, mm -hmm. every single day that we're here, we start the day by passing a block of what we call local bills. Okay. And all those local bills are being submitted by counties and cities mm -hmm. across the state saying that we want change mm -hmm. to our charter for whatever the reason is. So that's all this will be too. Okay. It will be, you know, where we put this charter together, mm -hmm. uh, but we... You can you don't you can foresee everything. Right. So as you see things, excuse me, as you see things mm -hmm. going forward, you make changes to the charter. Right. But I've chosen to not make changes without first giving the public an opportunity to chime in mm -hmm. on what what I'm proposing to change. Right. One of them would be to create a code of ethics. Oh yes. And uh, and the code of ethics uh, would also cover violations of our charter. Excellent. I've gotten a ton of phone calls from people saying, how do we get people that are on the council and in the mayor's office, how do we get them to follow the charter? And um, I'm not sure that everybody's read the charter, to be honest with you. but uh, Apparently not. But, but, but <laughs> I'm hoping that this would be a, a vehicle to at least force the issue. Right. There will be penalties for violating the charter. Okay. Uh, that, and those penalties would be financial penalties okay. that could not be paid for with city money, okay. nor could it be paid for with campaign money. Okay. It would have to be paid personally. Okay. And, uh, and, and the fine increases with the number of penalties that you have. And, uh, and then there's a penalty if you don't pay it, okay. which could include um, the starting the procedure for removal. Okay. And uh, so that's one. Uh, you mentioned a moment ago about the vetoes. Yes. And the intent of the veto is to give balance in the, in the government. Mm -hmm. if, if the mayor sees something, the mayor does not get a vote on these ordinances. Right. But if there's something that the mayor sees through his or her, you know, we don't know who future mayors are going to be. Mm -hmm. Uh, through their wisdom or their knowledge or their experience that says this is not a good thing for the city mm -hmm. and so I'm going to exercise my authority to veto it. Right. And, uh, and then the county, then the, excuse me, then the uh, city council members, if they say well you haven't considered this Mr. Mayor mm -hmm. and so we're going to override your veto because here's some additional information that maybe you didn't consider when you vetoed it. So basically it's a back and forth yes. between the mayor and council to try to come up with something that is in the best interest of the citizens. Right. That's not happening right now. No, it's not What's happening. What's happening is the mayor is vetoing, the city council is saying, and not all of them. You know, Correct. The city, not, it's not all of them, but you know, I don't want to lump them, but it, it is what it is. It is not based on the votes. Yeah, based on the votes. <laughs> so then the council said, they basically said, well, we're not going to let you tell us we can't do it. Boom, we're going to override your veto. Right. But there's no logic associated or, with it. Right. And, and, and that's Except the problem. Except the intent to diminish the mayor's power. And that's what we as citizens have noticed is when you come after a veto and you then almost lobby and seek to get another vote to ensure that it doesn't come back to the mayor mm -hmm. so he can exercise his power, then that there's, there's a motive and intention there that's outside of the scope 
where it will be beneficial to any of us. Well, that's why I said we get caught in the crossfire. We do. So we do. So the second thing that would be part of this charter of reorg mm -hmm. would be to change how that process works. Right now, if the mayor vetoes it, it immediately comes up at the next meeting okay. for another vote if they if they want to. Mm -hmm. I wanted to skip one meeting, give them some time to talk to each other. During their work session. During their work session, <laughs> during, I don't care when they do it, but somehow <laughs> take some it. time, talk about it, and, and, and get some ideas to why both sides are feeling the way they and feel. And talk to the constituents. Well, that's the next part of this, <laughs> this change. If they can't come to some kind of a conclusion mm -hmm. before the veto can be overridden, there has to be a public hearing. Oh. This is sounding. When will you have this? Oh, I'm going to be introducing <laughs> it shortly. Okay, good. And, and and they would have to have a public hearing. If they can resolve it on their own, fine. Mm -hmm. But if they can't, then they need to have a public hearing and get some more input, input from, from the constituents, from the constituents as to how it works. Now, they can ignore the constituency if they choose to because they do have the right to override the veto. Still. But, but mm -hmm. if they override it and the public has said, we don't, we, don't we don't want this. We don't want this, then you have to deal with your constituency at that particular point. Right. And that's where the trust gets diminished, and, and if that were to happen, because it seems that that is what's been happening already. Yeah. Well, but again, you know, to me, when you and I, you know, uh, had our disagreement, yes, we, we talked about it. We did. And when we talked about it, we found that we really didn't have anything that we disagreed on. We really didn't. Is that correct? <laughs> that is correct. Okay. But the, the, what the operative word was, we talked about it. We did. And I think that that's what has to happen here. So this legislation would give them time right. to have the discussion. Because I would bet that nine times out of ten, there's not that much of a disagreement. Right. Now, this issue with the, the AIDS, I know you touched on that. Yes. And, and I had issues with that, too. I still have issues with it. We all do. Um, and, a lot of us do, I yeah, should say. And, and, the, and the issues primarily are around what you just said. First of all, we don't know what they're going to be doing. Right. Second of all, the the pay is out of line with reality. It is. And and uh, I think that the total was almost three hundred something thousand dollars 322121 dollars Which we could hire, what, four or five police officers? We could actually hire the same amount of police officers that they have extended for AIDS because they would pay the officers 41000 okay. new coming into the city versus the 44000 okay. for part-time AIDS. Okay. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's a, a better use of the resources. Well, and it and, sends a different message to the police. Mm -hmm. I think that night, as citizens, we were taken aback, but if I were thinking about coming to the new city of South Fulton and even just being a, a police officer today, that sent a totally different message, I think, to our officers. Right. Well, and how, so we value how we value them. Mm -hmm. and, and if there's an officer watching this, I want them to know that I value them. And I we know you do. always want them to yeah, know that and, we value them. And, and that we are, in fact, you know, trying to make sure that, that the safety is first. Absolutely. And uh, so, anyway. We've covered a lot of stuff in a real short period of time, um, and but is there something that you want to say that we didn't have a chance to talk about? Well, I do. I want the citizens to start getting engaged uh, with your city council. Um, the city council, according to the charter, should be creating resolutions, ordinances, and policies right. that directly impact your district. And that's how we're going to hold them accountable for doing their part okay. as we're working through the transition of the new city. And it's very important whether you engage them by phone call, email, uh, coming to the council meetings. Some of them are starting to have town hall, uh, town hall meetings. Get involved. Get to know them. Let them know what your needs are. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, sitting behind the computer and putting it on social media is not meeting the need. Right. Of and a lot of times it's the same people talking to each other. And it's the same people. So we've got to be engaged in order for them to know that we are taking this very seriously. Okay. That's an accountability measure that we need to uh, continue to move forward with along throughout this process to hold elected officials accountable. Mm -hmm. They owe their constituents right. that much uh, respect and dignity because they receive those votes to be in those positions. Okay. Well, you're here at the Capitol right now. I am. So, 
what message do you have for me? Because well, you're my constituent too. <laughs> the message I have for you is keep doing what you're doing. I absolutely love the fact that you have on the sidelines, I would say, it impacts you as well, mm -hmm. but you have had a different viewpoint from, from what we may see things, and you're exercising your ability to make an impactful change that will help, hopefully help us in the long term right. by making these modifications to uh, the charter for the betterment of the city. So I want to applaud you. Um, for taking this approach. But well, I'm going to put it out there. So once I put it out there, you know, I'll, I'm looking for feedback from you and from others right. uh, on on this thing. And like I said, if somebody comes to me and says, well, Representative Bruce, the, the changes that you're proposing, this is a bad idea. If they can show me why it's a bad idea right. and they have a better idea, mm -hmm. then I go with theirs. But you can't come to me and just say, this is a bad idea and not give me any any proof yeah, or validation yeah, to support can't, it. can't do that. Right. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm encouraging everybody, when you get this, uh, to come, uh, to, to, to respond to it, to give me your feedback. Let me know how you feel about these changes that, that are being proposed. And if you have other changes that you think should be uh, proposed, just let me know. Thanks again. I really appreciate you coming Thank and spending time with me. Thank you for having me. I appreciate and, uh, it. Will you come back? I will, absolutely. Okay, so when if we can get hold to um, Fran. Yes. And uh, hopefully she'll recover uh, uh, very well. Mm -hmm. And we'll get Fran back down here uh, along with you. And we can talk about how the education piece fits into this as well. Absolutely. Okay. I love that. All right. Thank All right. you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you.